Hello, Captains, and welcome back to Star Trek Online. We are playing the Romulan faction as a Riemann character for the first time, uh, aligned with the KDF, and um, I am playing on advanced difficulty missions as well. We are playing the Spectre's storyline at the moment, and today is going to be the last video of Spectre's. It will end Spectre's. And then, of course, we can jump into the Cardassian stuff next. But before we do that, there will be a ship upgrade after this video. So um, make sure to watch the next video in this series for sure, because it will be showing you the ship I chose. I'll be go going over the build of that ship, taking it into combat to show you what that ship can do so that we get ready for the Cardassian missions coming up. But today is going to be Night of the Comet. Even assistance from an old friend may not be enough to stop the Davidian threat in time. This is Kamen speaking. We've determined that the Davidians are using the trialic energy of Driffin's Comet to ease their entry into our phase variants. That is the cause of all the incidents in the neutral zone. But it's worse than that. It's possible that given the amount of trialic and temporal energy in that comet, that the Davidians will be able to destabilize the area of space surrounding the comet enough that they will pull it and everything into it into their phase variants. In essence, they're trying to steal an entire sector. The resulting effects to the surrounding space would make the destruction of Romulus look like the popping of a party favor. The only thing we can do to stop it is destroy the comet before the Davidians can use it. It's not enough to do it in the present, because the Davidians would still have access in the 23rd century when the comet moves past Drazana. We have to destroy it there. You'll need your ship this time, so you just can't use the Davidian portal. I can help you get to the past, but you'll need to follow my instructions precisely. And we can choose a Federation, or a Klingon, a Type 2, Type 3 phaser, or a Disruptor pistol. Everything we do is for the Empire. We need to go to the Bepi 113 system. Let's see Slipstream. We have it now. Now that we're level 50, we can do that. Trans Warp 20. Oh yeah, much faster. We are like there now. <laughs> Definitely gets us to where we need where we need to go a lot faster. Enter Beppy one thirteen. Yep. Very few people ever get a chance to see this system. Basically, this idea, this uh, star is ideal for a, sl a slingshot to send us back in time. Very similar to what the Enterprise did in Star Trek IV. Uh, also, I've got a um, hollow device installed so that I will appear like a uh, D7 KDF ship. Now we look like a Klingon ship. So we fit right in. Basically, we have to fly through these uh, graviton catapults one at a time. Each one propels us faster and faster. And we are in the 23rd century, just like that. Captain, based on the decay elements of the system, we've arrived 150 years in the past. Attention, unidentified ship. I am Commodore Jacob Ross, in command of the USS Reuben James. We have been searching for a Klingon vessel reported to have attacked a colony in the Gliese system. You fit the description of the ship we are looking for. Unless you can prove you are not, we will take immediate action. 
Here. Mm -mm. We're gonna have to take him out. No choice. Well, that was easy. Are, but they're all over the station. They're killing people. Please, you have to help us. Captain, the comet approaching the station, its trialic energy is making it easier for the Davidians to manifest. So we're going to have to fight the Davidians. Again, I'm going to play this at an accelerated pace, and I will be looking for dialogue differences, however. We have to take out all of these Davidians. Make sure to take the loot as well. I'm going to go back where we started because I know that they respawn back there. This place is clear. Now let's move on to the other side. Oh, let's take that loot. We'll move straight across and take care of those first. Got them all. Here we go.
Okay, that room is done. Now I think we just head to the other side, right? Did we get all of these sides? We just have one left? I just want to double check. It's got a green circle here, but I, I, I did get everyone in this room, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, so we just have to go to this side then. Oh, wait, no, there's one back here. Look at that. Look at that guy. Look at him. Two back here. Okay, there we go. Now we got the last room opened up to us, the lounge area. Do not attempt to stop us. We have We must be. Leave immediately, or I will amplify the time distortion and destroy this station. You will not survive. Hey! Those things are holed up in the lounge, and they've got some of my customers in there with them. The door is barricaded, but a few hits with a phaser should take care of that. Get my people out of there! <laughs> it says disruptor in the text. Ha. Huh. Funny, funny. Probably because I'm a Klingon. Yeah, he was pretty tough. Even uh, on advanced here, I could feel him tough. But he was able to be taken out. Let's go back in and make sure we got everything. Oh yeah, gotta talk to Scotty. My, you're a funny looking one, aren't you? Thanks for the help, friend. What were those things? Uh, damn spirits snuck up on me. I noticed a spike in triadic energy and I was working to adjust the station's shields to compensate. I went to fetch a hyperspatter, and I was attacked! If you help me, I can finish my repairs before the triolic energy reaches lethal level. By the way, you can call me Scotty. Okay, company Scotty to the shipyard. Just as I suspected, the triolic energy is increasing. We'll be cooked like a haggis if we don't do something about it. There is a wee store on this station. The last who runs it, Cassidy, said they might be getting a supply of the new quantum flux regulators. The Mark II versions. 
If we had one of those regulators, I could modify the flux coordinating sensors and use them to modulate the shields protecting the station. That would buy us some time. Go find Cassidy. She'll know where they are. So this is that part where it's nerve tonic time. A little bit of running back and forth before we can start it. We gotta talk to Cassidy, then I think we have to go back to Scotty. Then we can come back and do the drink. What were those things? Oh, are you looking for something from the store? Oh, I don't know. So nobody really recognizes that I am a Reman <laughs> or aligned with the KDF. Which is interesting. All right, I really just need to talk to Scotty and then go back to the bar and get a nerve tonic. Did you get the quantum flux regulator? Nerve tonics? Ugh, you don't look. Oh, for Cassidy. Glad to hear it. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. stuck. <laughs> Couldn't get out of there. Okay, let's go get our nerve tonic. Hopefully I remember these ingredients for this one too. Let's see if I can do this. What can I get you? I need a drink. I'll okay. need some more detail. I think she likes it hot. What kind of flavor profile? I think she like? likes it sour. How strong do you want this I'm drink going to, be? to say a little pick me up. Would you like this drink to be served? I want to say a stemmed glass. And last but certainly not least, I want to say a, dro a drop of honey. Me all the info I, need. I believe that's a nerve tonic. That I think will do it, and that will get can uh, Cassidy uh, relaxed, happy. Do you have a drink for me? Oh, oh, <laughs> there's a lovely sour. Oh, there's just enough. Oof, to this drink to make it really stick with ya. Oh, I yep. love the style of this glass. It accentuates the flavor of the ingredients. Yep. Honey! No, not you. <laughs> the drink. <laughs> okay. <sighs> that is my... We're getting our quantum flux modulator. Now we can return back to Scotty. Now all of that. And nobody recognized that I'm Riemann. So really no dialogue differences uh, in this entire storyline mission here. Spectres. I am a Romulan, a Reman, but they don't care. They don't mind. Okie dokie. That's the way it is then. The right tool for the right job. Let's go stop this comet. Ah, crap. They, they shot me. Oh, they shot at me, but they didn't shoot me. I'm still cloaked. That was cool. I don't know how I evaded that. Oh, wrong target. <laughs> That's not good. I was very close for that fragment, but they blew me up anyway. We're getting there. Two or three of the fragments. Then we got shards. 
We will get there. I may die a few times, but we will get there. Got all of the big ones. Whoa, I disappeared really fast. Yeah, on advanced, they're packing a much bigger punch. I can feel it. And since I'm not fighting them back, it's a little hard to stay alive. But that is just what we're going to have to do if we want... Where's the... Where is the asteroid at? I should have three pieces left. I lost where the other ass part of the asteroid's at. What is shooting at me? Well, that didn't work. All I need is three more shards. I just gotta find the shards and I don't know where they are. See, I see the enemy and where are the shards? I'm creeping slowly because I'm trying to locate where the comet is at. That might be it. I can't tell. I don't think that's the comet I sh I'm supposed to be taking care of. Unless it didn't label them correctly. Can I only see it if I'm not in cloak? This is annoying. All I need to do is find the rest of the three uh, fragments to the asteroid comet thing and I don't know where they are I don't I can't see them now I've got permanent damage I'm gonna have to heal of course all I see is battle cruisers battle cruisers I don't see I might have to beam out and back in because I have no idea what's going on with these fragments.
They're not like up or down, are they? I'm not like not seeing them, right? Did they like float far away or something? Okay, well guys, I don't know what to do. I can't find the, uh, I've got to be blind or dumb or both. I'm gonna warp out and warp back in to finish this part of the mission because I don't know where my fragments went, but I can't find them. I can't finish the mission without them. Warning, ship is under attack. So if I go in and go back in. I wonder where it's going to leave me. Let's find out. Okay, right here in this part of it. Good. So basically I can just do the whole comet thing over again. Try to do a better job this time and get them all quickly. We'll kind of move around here out of the out of the way. There we go. And don't do that. Do this. We're going to come out. We'll do that. That. A lot of cloak. Wait, what? Did it just happen again? Again? Again, guys, really? Oh, good, there they are. What the heck? Come on, oh, come on, how close is that? That thing should be dead. Well, at least they didn't disappear this time completely off my radar. I don't know what happened the first time. Okay, it's still there. Good. We're going to get this thing and get out of here. Ready to move on out of this. Thank you. Get me out of here. <laughs> For sure. Man, I want to be done with this. Now I got a ton of damage to go fix. Look at all this stuff here. Don't alter the timeline. Defeat remaining Klingons. You mean I have to defeat them? I shouldn't have to. I destroyed all the comets. Am I gonna have to defeat all the Klingons? Cause that's gonna be extremely annoying. Please don't tell me I have to. I'm gonna have to do it, aren't I? It's not gonna let me... It's not gonna finish the mission until I do this. 
Why are you doing this to me, game? Normally you have the option not to kill him and you can leave. Why is it not giving me the option now? I... Uh, this is gonna be painful. Yep, this is going to take a while. I guess it wants me to do this. I've got no choice. Look at all the damage I have. Uh, this is going to be hard. This is definitely going to be difficult. Well, I guess I did pretty good. We just got the main ship now. All right. Guess I guess I had to do that. Probably because I did change the timeline or affected it or somehow. That did it. The remaining comet debris is too small to be a threat. Now we just need to find a way to... One moment. I'm detecting a temporal anomaly. It's forming inside of us. If you are receiving this message, then you and your crew have completed your mission. Driffin's comet is destroyed, and the Davidians are no longer a threat to the Empire. I thank you for your service to Klingon intelligence. And because I will never leave one of my people behind even if they are not Klingon. Mm. I have found a way to assist you in return. When you last docked at Ganalda Station, Finally. I had some modifications made to your vessel. One of those is the addition of a Borg temporal node salvaged from a cube in the Batron cluster. It's set to return you to our time. Congratulations on a job well done. Finally, for the first time in this series here, the Spectres, it recognizes that we are not Klingon or... Uh, human, even though you are not Klingon, thank you for recognizing I'm not something, I'm, I am something different. Finally, thank you. Recognition, that's all I ever wanted. Whew, that mission was annoying. Look at all this damage. Bridge station failure, EPS conduit failure, projectile launcher damage, targeting system failure. Yeah, we're going to go have to do some stuff. Stuff will have to be done. Repairing. Kova. Driffin's Comet is a memory. I'm sure a Federation scientist will do some meaningless study into its disappearance in the 23rd century. But, like so many of the minutiae, those explorers are so fascinated with it will be of no consequence what matters is that you acted to protect your empire you did a warrior's duty 
There is no greater reward than that. It would be best for the Empire to keep the details of what transpired here secret. Time travel is so troublesome. But while the Lore Singers will never tell the tale of your ship and the Comet, know that those in power recognize and appreciate your achievements. Go with honor, my friend. I will call on you again in the future, should the need arise. Now, we could get a Klingon disruptor, but we are not Klingon. And we could get a Federation weapon, but we're not Federation. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably best to go ahead and just take the Federation Type 3, because it's a very unique and very cool weapon to have. So we'll Everything take it. Congratulations, Padman. Accolade complete. I'm not going to do Triala system yet. Ooh, I have gained access to the Admiralty system. So we can finally begin doing Admiralty stuff, and I will begin with... Come on. I'm going to begin with the Federation, and uh, the reason why, instead of the Romulan, is because the Federation one gives you the tour of duty, gives you, uh, I think it's specialization points, doesn't it? Assignment gives you... I think when you complete the tour of duty on the United Federation Planets, it's like specialization points or something. So it's very cool. It uh, helps you with that. So I'm actually going to start with the Federation one. That is not going to work very well. That's probably going to fail, but we'll just set it anyway. Okay, I'll let that go. So I got Admiralty system going. Um, I need to go heal my stuff. And the next order of business is to go upgrade my ship to the next one. So let me just show you real quick what that ship will be. And I think for, for now, let's just go to Kronos. I'll go to the shipyard real quick and show you what to expect for my next ship that will entice you a little bit and uh, make you want to watch the next mission or the next episode, hopefully. Let's go to the first city. Then let's go to shipyard. Okay, let's go over this way. And ooh, it got really dark and I can't see anything. Didn't there used to be like a desk here? Yeah, wait a minute. There's a bug or some kind of problem because there used to be a desk right here. A big table where you went to like shuttle and uh, ship information was right there. Does that mean it's somewhere else now? I guess it's right here. Okay. So, um, what do we have? We're going to go to tier 5 of Vice Admiral, which is level 50. Actually, we're going to go not Vice Admiral. We're going to Sub Admiral. Yes, this is what I'm getting next right here. The Di... Dinos, Dinos Warbird Destroyer. It is tier 5, and I am flying a tier 5 ship right now. The Hafei is also tier 5. Um, and these are both level 40 ships, or sub-admiral ships. So, yeah, it's basically the same level of ship, so I'll be going sideways on level of uh, ships. But this one is unique. It can be upgraded to tier 5U. And um, so that's going to give it an edge. It will be better than the Hafei anyway. Plus, this is the 1,000 day veteran ship. And uh, I have never flown it. And it has a full commander tactical station for my c commander tactical powers. Um, it has the most tactical consoles in it out of engineering and science. It's got, you know, four tactical consoles. And when you upgrade it to tier 5U, it gains another tactical. So it has five. So this can be a very powerful DPS-heavy DPS uh, ship. 
the turn rate is not the best on it. It is not as maneuverable as an as a like escort type would be, uh, but it's still good. And I think I could improve that, of course. Um, maybe put an RCS on it or something to make it more better. But um, it it will end up being a pretty darn good um, tactically inclined escorty type ship for me. Especially once upgraded to tier 5U because it will have a mastery package that leans toward doing more damage uh, from a tactical standpoint. So that's going to be really awesome and it just looks cool. Look at that. I cannot wait. Now there is also a fleet version of it. If you go to Vice Admiral, I think you will find a fleet version of this thing. Fleet Mogai, Fleet Delin, Fleet Tavaro, Hakona, Darius Mogai, Delin, Tavaro. Nope, maybe under. We have to go to Fleet. Fleet to Darius, Fleet Hapox, Hanam, Hafez, Skurge, Gatinga. I'm pretty sure. I know there's a Fleet version. Here it is Fleet Dinos Warbird. So there is a Fleet version of it that I could also fly and it is also upgradable to tier 5 U. that's going to give you better hull strength and better um, uh, better shield strength the turn rates the same though it I think it also gives you a it switches around the consoles it gives you an extra engineering and takes off a of science but it's still commander tactical so it kind of changes the bridge officer seating around a little bit and it gives you more hull strength and more shield. Obviously, it's the better one to fly. It is beefed up a little bit more. Uh, but you do need, of course, all these things to buy it. Um, I don't have the uh, ship modules, which are expensive. And uh, it'd be kind of unfair at this level of the game. I don't really need a ship, you know, that beefed up right now. I think I would rather get the tier 6 version of the ship if I were going to, you know, have an in-game ship of the Dinos, um, you know, line of ships. Because if you go to tier 6, there is a tier 6 version of this thing. And there's a lot, there's a lot more tier 6 ships than anything, but uh, I think it's, I think it's a Warbird. Um, see if I can find it here for you. Command, uh, engineering, science. Uh, there it is. The, that's this is it right here. The Dinaeus Warbird Destroyer, Tier Six. This is the Tier Six version of that ship. So actually, you can get even better by getting the Tier Six version of this one. And again, this is a 1,000 day veteran reward ship, but the Tier Six version of it. And look at it. it has one, two, three, four, five. This one basically has the same console setup as the Tier 5 U anyway, but then of course it does have a Starship trait, which the other one does not. The Tier 5 U would not have a Starship trait. Um, but it does have the Mastery Package and this, the turn rate is still the same even on the Tier 6 version. Um, but it does have Commander Tactical and uniquely it will have a Command Station on it as well which the tier 5 you would not have. So just a few other upgrades, more shield modifier, and more hull strength on the tier 6 as well, even I think beyond the fleet version. And then is there a fleet version of the tier 6? Most likely. Yes, fleet Dynase Warbird Destroyer tier 6. So this one's even better than that one. Look at this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tactical consoles, 1, 2, 3, 4 engineering, to science, but the turn rate still 14. So all of them have the same turn rate, no matter what. But again, an even higher hull and higher shield modifier on the fleet tier six version of this. And you get commander tactical station still and a commander station, command station. So there are a series of these 1000 day fleet ships or 1000 day veteran ships. Uh, and they all start, basically there's four of them, they all start with that very base tier 5 level 41. And so that's the one I'm going to fly first. That's the uh, that's a nice little upgrade from what I have, and I'll upgrade it to tier 5 U. And uh, that'll be good, that'll be a nice little thing to fly, but just know that there are better versions of it in the future we could try as well. I just never have tried that series of Warbird before, so 
I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun to fly, I think. Anyway, oh, it's so dark here. You can barely see anything. Well, okay, so that's what the next episode is going to be, guys. The next episode is going to be me, and I will be in that new ship. I will show you the build that I have, and we will take it into combat and practice in it a little bit. That's the next video. So I hope you stay around and stick around for that. It should be a lot of fun and a lot of information in that next video because uh, it's a new ship I haven't used before. So I am looking forward to trying that sucker out. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for the next one.